Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and today we're returning to the island of Quinoa for our seventh month in Animal Crossing New Horizons. With spring approaching, I had a bunch of pretty ambitious goals for the month. For one, I wanted to attend Bunny Day for the first time and get all the Bunny Day recipes. I've never done it before, and I really want to experience all the events in the game. I also wanted to pay off all two million bells of my debt, catch a coelacanth because it's my absolute favorite fish in Animal Crossing, and get every single portrait for the village on my island or the good ones i should say and i mean if flora or tammy the pea bear decide to leave that's just icing on the cake so with all that out of the way let's get right into it as we began our seventh month on quinoa all the snow from winter had just melted away leaving behind only this sad little snow boy hello darkness my old friend and along with the change of the seasons, I of course needed a change of clothes, so I headed to the Able Sisters and ended up throwing together this lemon grab outfit. While I was putting the finishing touches on it, Wolfgang just barged into my house, which, really awkward timing, kinda in the middle of something here. With my spring outfit perfected, I began the task of talking with all my villagers. If I was gonna get everyone's portrait, I needed to be super consistent about it, so I headed to visit Sherb. He actually asked me if I had any skills, for instance, his was apparently dislocated his jaw to eat more? Concerning. But I no doubt one-upped him, telling him about how I could do a loon call. Uh. Following that fun little show and tell, I then headed to see Poppy, who gave me a yodel cardigan. <coughs> Day and I mean, with my various talents now showcased to the villagers, I began to get to business doing my daily island chores. I dug up some fossils, rifled through the garbage, and found the money rock before flying over to Harv's Island. Yes, I am still working on getting all the art pieces from Red. It's gonna take a bit, but all in good time because I purchased this lovely ancient statue and in the process became a true patron of the arts. It feels good to be recognized, you know? The only thing that would feel better is not being being in two million bells of debt, so... <laughs> <laughs> on the front of house design, my main priority was the creepy gyroid room, and it was actually starting to fill up quite nicely. I added a couple more little dubers in there, and then put some of my items into storage, during which Lucky welcomed himself in. He told me that on a scale of Papas Bravas to ginger ale, my interior design was a yogurt parfait. Thank you, Lucky, for your insight. I pondered what on earth this meant as I enjoyed a cup of coffee with my pal Brewster. Not that I should be surprised, honestly, I feel like every interaction I have with Lucky is just so freaking funny. Like the next day, I said hello to Lucky and he asked what my favorite food was. You know, there's stew, pizza, donuts. No, I wrote Al's fear. At first he seemed slightly alarmed, but then he was just like, sounds yummy. Directly after this, I stumbled across Fauna and noticed that she was contemplating leaving the island. I contemplated Fauna's contemplation for a while, but ultimately decided against it. She's not my favorite villager ever, but she's all right and kind of has a place in my heart because she's just been here so long. I continued gifting all my villagers and ran into Sherb at the Able Sisters, giving him some random candle holder I had, and I actually got his portrait in return. I was so stunned, I couldn't even say a word. That was one down, pretty much every single other one to go. The natural next thing to do was pick up this shamrock outfit and just celebrate for a bit. Truly a wondrous day. But the celebration didn't last long because when I came outside the next morning, I found Marshall all upset at my front door. It seemed like something really bad had happened, so I followed him to his house only to walk into a surprise birthday party for me. They remember my birthday. I had no idea this could happen. I was so shocked. Wolfgang and Fauna were there, and with everyone watching, I made a little birthday wish, blew out the candles, and then absolutely obliterated this pinata. There was just no need to go this hammy with it. I really apologize. Inside, somehow there were entire cupcakes that fell right onto the floor, and Marshall was nice enough to offer them to me. I couldn't possibly eat all the floor cupcakes though, so I gifted them to all my favorite villagers, including Lolly, who gave me these sick birthday shades. Later that day, I realized you could get this cool birthday hat, but despite handing out cupcakes, to all the good villagers, I didn't receive one. I was a bit disappointed, so I went to the Able Sisters to craft my own birthday outfit, eventually settling on this piece of work. And the birthday miracles only continued as I headed to the roost, where Brewster prepared a special birthday coffee just for me and even gave me a little happy birthday wish. I capped off the day with a special birthday concert from KK Slider, and it was so 
freaking precious because instead of rolling credits like it usually is, I got to read notes from all the villagers on the island wishing me a happy birthday. Like, why are my Animal Crossing villagers so wonderful? I genuinely teared up during it. Like, what the heck? I love this game so much. And as if that wasn't special on its own, when I checked my mailbox the next morning, Sherb had sent me the birthday hat. It may not have been my birthday anymore, but I was still extremely excited about it. And for some reason, after all these birthday surprises, I just got a really good feeling that the villager visiting the campsite that day was gonna be a banger. But no, it definitely wasn't. Message received, my birthday is officially over. Wolfgang approached me the following afternoon asking if I could deliver a gift to Lucky for him, and I happily agreed. Anything for two of my most beloved villagers. After delivering Wolfgang's gift, I got to thinking, and you know, I was really happy with the villagers we had on Quinoa. They were all lovely. Heck, they even threw me a birthday party, and when I got brutally stung by these wasps in front of Town Hall, Lolly was there to give me some medicine. And with this in mind, I became extremely determined to round out our roster with the last couple dreamies we needed and rid the island of Flora and Tammy for good. The first step in this plan? To gather some fences and gate them off from the rest of the community. I've run into a bit of an issue. I can't actually block them out because they're both on the freaking beach, which means that I can't put fences down so they can literally just walk through. I don't know how they did this. I don't know how they orchestrated this, but I was extremely displeased. For now though, I left the fences down as a symbolic act of war. Until I could get rid of them, I would just have to do all the work myself. But it seemed like Flora and Tammy's bad vibes were already impacting the other villagers because when I spoke to Poppy, she was ready to up and leave. Obviously, I couldn't have that, but it just broke my heart and made me incredibly concerned for my villagers' well-being. Following those encounters, I went through my entire wardrobe the next morning to find gifts for my villagers and increase all their friendship. I treated Poppy especially by giving her this lovely little frog costume and everyone else seemed to love their new clothes too, which made me happy to see. It was raining on day 11, so the conditions were perfect for completing one of my other goals, to catch the coelacanth. I ran along the ocean that entire night going for anything that looked remotely coelacanth-like, and at one point I was sure I had found one, but alas, no. It was just a tire. I am very deeply upset with the outcome of this fishing, um, period fishing session. I don't know. I'm upset. I'm leaving now. Following that failed fishing trip, I needed something to lift my spirits, and luckily the next day just so happened to be Lolly's birthday. I headed over to her house to celebrate, and although the thought of giving her a day-old fish did occur to me, I gave her a peach instead. And I began to focus on refining my fishing skills and actually caught this massive ore fish before running into Lucky. At first, I was worried he wanted to move off the island too, but it turned out that he just wanted to change my nickname. And after a good deal of thought, I went with the nickname Goobins on a whim. Later that night, as I was enjoying the ambiance of my gyroid room, Fauna knocked on the door. I don't know why everyone does that. They're always just inviting themselves in. I didn't feel like dealing with any more social interaction for the day, so I just turned the lights off and pretended I wasn't home, and eventually she left me alone. In the background, as all this stuff was going down on the island, I'd been chipping away at my home loans just a little bit every day. But I dedicated the entirety of day 14 to tackling my debt head on, making enough bells with fish and fruit to bring us below the 1 million mark. With my finances in better order and a whopping seven bells of interest in my pocket, I began landscaping the area around Poppy's house in preparation for our next build, which would be Poppy's garden shop. I still needed to collect a bunch more items and hammer out the plan for it, but I got the basic outline of the area down at least. The following evening, it was raining and thundering once again, but this time, I wouldn't let the coelacanth slip through my fingers. I was prepared to spend the entire night fishing, if that's what it took, and you know, it was really seeming like that's what it was gonna take. All the fish shadows started looking the same and I was catching so many sea bass and quickly losing hope. Until suddenly, oh my god, I caught the coelacanth. Lolly, Lolly, look at what we've gotten. Lolly, no, come, come here. No, please. Lolly didn't seem all that impressed, but I was so chuffed and immediately went and donated that sucker to the museum. And oh my goodness, behold the beauty of the coelacanth. The coelacanth is literally my favorite fish in the entire world, and this was the first time I'd ever caught one in Animal Crossing New Horizons, so I was so deeply happy to see it swimming around. Uh, in captivity. Sorry, bud.
As I started up the island on day 18, Isabel announced that Bunny Day would be happening that Sunday, which was super exciting because I'd never actually participated in that event. I missed it last year. I also really wanted to buckle down on getting every portrait from my villagers and learned about a trick for getting the photos easier. So basically, you craft an iron wall lamp, pack it up in wrapping paper, and then gift it to your villagers. And from what I understand, the iron wall lamps when wrapped up give a very specific amount of friendship points that gives a higher chance of triggering the villagers to gift you their portrait. Anyways, I decided to try this out, crafting up a bunch of iron lamps to hopefully get some portraits. And I wasn't very lucky on my first attempt with Lolly. And warrior armor, no! Things didn't get any better with Bill either, who gave me a conductor hat. But as I was heading to Wolfgang's, now to- oh! oh! Oh my god, oh my god, what is that? Is that the bunny day NPC? My iron wall lamp failure was only made worse by stumbling upon this horrifying rabbit named Zipper. He gave me a bit of a rundown on Bunny Day, and I've gotta say, I was excited to find all the eggs, but very much not excited to deliver them to this guy. After that horrible distraction, I headed to Wolfgang's and gifted him a lamp as well. What the heck is a chiton? First of all, look, I know it's pronounced chitin. I thought it was French or something on first glance. I don't know. And second, it really seemed like this lamp trick was not working. My last resort was Fauna, so I headed over to her house. Hello. <laughs> and let me tell you, I was very pleasantly surprised. I think you are. Something for you. Oh my god, it actually happened. Whoa. Oh my god, I actually got another portrait. Ah! I forgot that was here. I for Stop, stop. Make it stop. After being gifted this suit from Lucky, I decided to fully embrace the spirit of Easter, dressing up as Eggman from Sonic. And now that I was all egged up, I began searching for eggs around the island, partly in preparation for the bunny day recipes, but mostly because I was afraid of what Zipper would do to me if I didn't. After collecting eggs for a while, I got a bit desperate and decided to try my hand at the stock market again. This debt was really getting to me, honestly. I just wanted it to be over. But grudgingly, I found Daisy May and sank all all my bells into a 700 turnip investment. What have I done? First thing the next morning, I checked turnip prices and to my utter dismay, the prices of turnips had dropped from 103 bells to 92 bells. Just splendid. After crafting some more iron wall lamps and getting this matching hat for my suit, I checked the afternoon turnip prices and surprise, surprise, they had dropped even more to 87 bells. Another poor financial decision on quinoa. What is new? Only a villager photo would make me feel better at this point, so I wrapped up all my lamps and started handing them out. My gift to Bill, Lolly, Lucky, and Wolfgang yielded nothing, but Poppy, she and I are tight. I was so excited to get Poppy's photo, and more importantly, it seemed like the iron wall lamp trick was actually working. I'd been gifting clothes and fruits for months with only like one portrait to show for it, but suddenly two within two days? Oh yeah. With that plan in motion, it was really just the stress of the turnip market that was weighing on my mind. And it definitely didn't help that the prices had dropped even lower to 83 bells each. In the throes of my lack of financial responsibility, I kept collecting eggs, hung up our new villager photos in the basement, and crafted even more iron wall lamps. The only ways to cope, really. I didn't get any villager photos that day, but I did dress up like Betty from Adventure Time, which I was super into. This was just not my week though, because not only had the turnip prices dropped to 30 bells per turnip. But when I checked my pockets, I also realized all my turnips had rotted. I have no clue why. I was literally so devastated, but I pushed on through the tears, selling my spoiled turnips for basically nothing and handing out more lamps to my villagers. Again, the only way to cope. Honestly, I was really upset about this incident, but my mood was instantly lifted when Wolfgang gave me his photo. Things were really picking up now with the collection, but some of the villagers were playing hard to get. Lucky, for instance, was sitting under a tree all morning and wouldn't get up, meaning I couldn't give him a gift. So I went to catch some butterflies and wait for him, but out of the corner of my eye, I saw him stand up, so I ran on back and he literally sat down again. After what felt like ages, I finally caught Lucky standing up, meaning I could give him the wall lamp, but after all that trouble... It wasn't Lucky's photo I received, but instead a Mr. Flamingo. As if I needed more reminders of the flamingo I'm trapped with on this island. Thank you. I hate it. 
After receiving a letter signed RIPIDLY YOURS from Build the next morning, I spent the next couple days solely working toward getting villager portraits, crafting lamps, packing them up, and getting random articles of clothing in return. I figured I'd take part in the fishing tourney since there wasn't much else to do and hopefully make a bit of money to pay my debt off in the process. And after a whole day of fishing, I headed to Lucky's to give him his daily lamp and was bestowed with Lucky's photo. I was absolutely ecstatic and with Lucky's portrait obtained, we now only had to get Bill and Lolly's before we'd completed that goal for the month. Although we were kind of on a roll though, the portrait grind would have to wait because day 25 was bunny day. First thing that morning, I headed to the town square and spoke with Zipper, unfortunately. As much as I disliked this weird bunny, I really wanted to get all the special recipes as well as the reward you get for crafting each one. As Zipper handed me the recipe for the bunny day arch, I saw Wolfgang stroll by with this little number on, and I had to get me one of those. Once I'd crafted myself this amazing egg costume, I continued on the egg hunting grind, gathering earth eggs, water eggs, wood eggs, sky eggs, and crafting all the Bunny Day DIY recipes along the way. After finding and completing every single one, I talked to Zipper who said he'd give me the reward if I crafted this wobbling zipper toy. Oh god. I did so begrudgingly, bringing it straight to him, and after all that hard work, the big mysterious reward was just the recipe for a bunny day wand. I was honestly furious, you can see it in my eyes. But soon after, I came to an important realization. Bunny day wasn't just about the stupid little egg costumes, terrifying jump scares, and fun DIY recipes. Oh no no. I had also been given the DIY recipe for the egg party dress, which sells for 7200 bells each. So, I spent the rest of that day collecting eggs and converting them into dresses, eventually selling enough to pay 110,000 bells off my debt. Uh, wow, I really thought that was more impressive. Only 110,000? Okay, wow, that was kind of a bust. There I was, a shell of a human, and really all I had to show for my participation in Bunny Day was this monstrosity. But you know what? I'm gonna hide this zipper egg somewhere on the island, and whoever can spot him first gets, I don't know, a good noodle star. A life free from the nightmare that is zipper. Anyway, with all the festivities over, I was back on the iron wall lamp grind, but it was four straight days of rejection from Bill and Lolly. Even Wolfgang was watching it all go down, like, come on, Lolly, just give it to her. However, the good news was that after many weeks and many thousands of bells, I had finally paid off my debt. Oh my gosh, wait, it's my very last home loan? I'm free! Nook congratulated me for fully upgrading my house in a very backhanded way, might I add, but the house was as big as it could get, and as a reward, I now had a lifetime of free exterior renovations. In classic Nook fashion, though, I'd have to pay for any upgrades made to my home storage. That greedy little raccoon. With our debt paid off, we had completed three of our four goals for the month, leaving only the villager portraits left to finish. As a bit of a side hustle, I was also starting to work more seriously on filling the creepy gyroid room, and I dug up a handful that had been stewing away by the beach and promptly added them to the wall. Although I had waited patiently and harassed them regularly, I was really shocked that neither Tammy nor Flora had asked to move out in 29 whole days of playing the game. I, uh, something was definitely wrong there. I was a little disappointed that we hadn't gotten to go on a villager hunt this month, but I thought maybe this villager at the campsite would be someone lovely. We could add to the island and yeah, no, just this gross PB&J looking frog. Hard pass. I was feeling a bit down and started working on some random tasks to cheer myself up when suddenly I saw this golden balloon and when I popped it, it dropped the recipe for a golden slingshot. Apparently, you receive this recipe after popping 300 balloons, so that was really exciting. Our first golden tool. Also, I discovered these floor display lights that afternoon and thought they might look nice in the outdoor fossil exhibit near the museum, just to highlight my beautiful creations. Also, also, in the last month, I worked a lot on Wolfgang's bonsai garden and wasn't super satisfied with it, but using some Kuropi items I found, I made a lot of changes and adjustments to the design and I'm really pleased with it now. I even added this little Kuropi snack and some, uh, pyrotechnics. This is one devious little man, don't be fooled. It was our second to last day on Quinoa for the month and I'd been wearing this stupid egg costume for far too much of it, so I decided it was time for a change. Easter was over and I don't want to remember it, frankly. I'd been gifting my villagers iron wall lamps for nearly two weeks straight at this point and I hoped that my new outfit would bring me some luck in getting Bill and Lolly's portraits. But instead of getting the photos I wanted, I got this visual punk outfit instead. Like, why do you even own this, Lolly? Maybe she was just playing with me because as a thank you for the 14th iron wall lamp I'd given her this month, Lolly finally gave me her photo. 
I was so incredibly excited, and with Lolly's photo secured, I only had one left to get. Bills. And to my utter astonishment, no way! No chance! We just got two on the same day! We're free! I've done it! On the final day of the month, somehow I had gotten the two remaining photos I needed, and I was just so happy sitting on the floor in my basement with all my favorite villagers' portraits on display. Well, that is all I have for today, but we got a ton of stuff done this episode, accomplishing every single goal we set at the beginning of the month. We paid off our last home loan, caught a coelacanth, and unfortunately, attended Bunny Day. But honestly, I'm most happy about having received all the villager photos. All except Flora and Tammy. We'll be trying to get rid of them next month, don't fret. But thank you guys so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to the channel, I'd love to have you here. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Bye!